This is the football show. Ivan Tony is sure to be a player in demand this summer, and it could be good news for Peterborough United. They have a sell-on clause after selling Tony to Brentford in 2020. Their owner, Darren McAntony, told us there is much more to come from the striker at club and international level. I think, having done this for 18 years and scouted and scouted players, not just for their technical ability, but their personality and the growth that's in them at a certain age, I think he's not even in his prime, even though he's turning 28, because of the type of striker he is, where he's not your running behind, he's a bit of everything. I think he could... He's, he's one of those players where his best football is ahead of him. And I think when you look at clubs, that's not me trying to sell him because we're getting a sell on. I'm giving you an honest answer here. I honestly think I'm a Liverpool fan. I love Darwin Nunez. I, know, I look at our strikers and I have Liverpool went and got him as well. I was just like, oof. Uh, he turns Man United into a challenger for the Premier League. I think I'd said Arsenal originally needed to buy him in January to win the Premier League. I could end up being wrong there. They could end up winning. Um, I think there's five clubs probably in the world who could end up buying him, and he would improve any of those clubs by a mile. I think he improves England. I think everything about him as a character, a player, I think whoever buys him, 100 million be well spent. Because if you're getting a player and coming into his prime, you're going to get five, six years of his best. And I think when he scored a goal every other game in the Premier League for Brentford, God bless Brentford what they've done, but you put him in a team in the top five or six with the chances career, they're always trying to compare him to Ollie Watkins. Put Ivan and an Aston Villa team under Emery and see how many goals he scores in the Premier League. He'd probably be up there for the golden boot. You know, put him in an Arsenal team, put him in a Liverpool or a Man United team, he scores 30 Premier League goals in a sleep in a season. And I think anyone who disagrees with that hasn't been watching the last two and a half years. And a no-brainer for Germany. All day long. Are you kidding me? This guy's your, he's not only one of your best attackers, he's your best defender. You're one up late in a game and, you know, Gareth can be a little bit cautious when you're leading in a game. You've got 10 minutes to go. He's the type of player you bring on who defends from the front because just in corners alone, he's not your best defender. He can take penalties better than anyone, even though his first penalty ever was missed for us against Barnsley years ago. And he can score a goal. And he's as close to Harry Kane as you're going to get. Watkins is that running behind threat, different type of player. Yeah, to know if Gareth Southgate leaves Ivan Tony at home this summer, no comment. Mm, we shall see if it's going to be no comment. Joe and Sam, uh, back with us. It's as close to Harry Kane as you can get, says Darren McEntony. Uh, do, do you see him getting a big summer move? Um, yes, I think, I think Brentford should sell if he's not going to sign a new contract because he's only got one year left on his contract, so this summer will be the last time to get a big fee for him. If they don't, he doesn't sign that new deal. He'll obviously be able to leave for free next summer. The reported figure that Brentford want is somewhere between 80 and 100 million pounds. I'm not really sure that they're going to be able to get that. He's 28 years old. He's only scored four Premier League goals this season. I know obviously that's because he was unavailable for the first half of the season. But I think there will be teams that will want him. I think Arsenal and Chelsea, we're going to look in a bit about where he might fit. I think Arsenal and Chelsea are obvious candidates who might want a number nine. I disagree slightly with Darren McAntony there saying Manchester United or Liverpool. I think they're quite well set with number nines. Rasmus Hoyland, Darwin Nunez. Manchester City obviously don't need him with Erling Haaland. So I don't think there's that many teams who A, could afford him and B, actually need him. But if there's any time to sell, it's definitely now for Brentford. I think he definitely wants a move, just the way he's been talking. I think he even sort of was talking about Real Madrid a few weeks ago. I mean, and also Brentford has sort of resigned to losing him. They've already spent £30 million on the new striker, Igor Thiago. He's playing at Club Bruges at the moment. He's got 26 goals this season. So he's sort of been billed as the potential replacement. But I do just wonder about the price because Brentford have shown down the years that they can drive pretty hard bargains. I mean, when they're in the championship, they got £63 million for Ollie Watkins and Saeed Ben Rama. I remember they were in the championship. And last summer, they got £30 million for David Rea, which is pretty much the deal they wanted for him. So... You know, if, it sounds like they might be able to get the price they want for Tony. And if it's 80 to 100 million pounds, I do wonder if someone like Dominic Solanke is probably, you know, a bit younger, probably a bit cheaper. It's probably a better option for size looking for a number nine. Yeah. But that, Dara McAntony there, uh, uh, Michael did mention Arsenal and Manchester United. So how does he compare with what they've got? Well, come on over. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at Arsenal first and what they've got. Up front. And maybe many said that Arsenal maybe just could have done a bit more on Sunday against Manchester City. But look at Ivan Tony here. 11 games 
four goals and one assist. Of course, Ivan Tony returning in January. Kai Havertz, still Arsenal fans, maybe 50-50. Some really warming to him now. Eight goals and three assists. Eddie Nketiah, 24 games primarily off the bench. Five goals and two assists. And Gabriel Jesus, maybe people wondering there if Arsenal potentially might be replacing him in the summer. 20 matches, four goals and three assists. Let's have a look then at Manchester United. Would he fit there? Now, Rasmus Hoyland, the big money move. He started brilliantly in the Champions League. Wasn't really working for him so far in the Premier League, but he's done really well over the last few months. Seven goals. He's a pretty decent return in his first season in the Premier League. And, of course, Marcus Rashford has featured throughout the season. Seven goals so far. This is just Darren McAntony's view on Arsenal Manchester United. I think it's pretty clear that Ivan Tony won't be at Brentford next season. Thomas Frank has pretty much said it to myself and colleagues over the last few months at press conferences. But where he will end up, we don't know just yet. OK. Where, where would be a good fit then? You were both saying that perhaps Man United know because of what they've got. Arsenal for a replacement for Gabriel Jesus, as, as Michael was suggesting there. Or Real Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think you say Real Madrid. I think they're probably the only club outside the Premier League that would maybe even be able to afford it. I mean, PSG as well, who potentially want a, a number nine, but it seems to me like he'll probably stay in the Premier League. If you're ruling out City and Liverpool, probably Man United as well, because they've got Hoyland. You're kind of looking at Chelsea or Arsenal, I think. Then you think Chelsea, well, potential. They say that there's no issues with uh, the profit and sustainability rules, but with the amount of money that they've spent, the fact that they're probably not going to be in Europe again, you wonder, can they afford to spend money on someone like Ivan Tony? Arsenal as well probably could afford it, but there's a lot of other number nines out there. Victor Jokeres, uh, Victor Ozymen, Alexander Isak has been linked with Arsenal as well. One team that I think he might fit in is Tottenham. Now, I'm not sure that Tottenham would spend the amount of money that it would take to sign Ivan Tony, but they don't really have a recognised number nine. Richarlison and Son are better out wide or off the front man. So they're the kind of three teams where I'd think he'd fit. Whether any of them will actually move for him, I don't know. It'll be fascinating to see. I'm actually not sure where he fits because, you know, we talk about Arsenal. They're the Premier League's top goal scorers. They're not exactly screaming aside who's, who are sort of going, oh, we need a number nine right here, right now. And they've got plenty of strikers. Kai Havertz, Leandro Trossard, Gabriel Jesus. I mean, Manchester United, they seem to have invested a lot in Rasmus Hoyland as well. He's found his feet. Would Tony want to come in and potentially be a number two? I'm not really sure about that. City and Liverpool, he won't start. Aston Villa, I think they've got Ollie Watkins. So you're right, Joe. I think Tottenham is probably the most realistic team if he wanted to play Champions League football, who could go for him. But would Levy spend the money? So I can't see too many options for him unless he goes to Europe. But actually, don't be surprised if potentially he ends up staying at Brentford for the last year of his contract. It won't suit Brentford in terms of not getting a transfer fee for him. But Thomas Frank has said in the past that if he stays for his last year of his contract, great, because Brentford will then have their number nine sort of fit and available. Yeah, I, I wonder whether... Uh, close your eyes now. I wonder whether a good Euros, I can see it, <laughs> uh, semi-final against France. Uh, he scores the winning penalty in, in the penalty shootout and then goes and does the same in the final. Hmm, yeah, whatever. Uh, but, I mean, first of all, will he go to the Euros? Could he have a good Euros? That would depend on Harry Kane maybe being injured or, or something like that. So, but that would certainly up his price and his profile, wouldn't it? It would help, wouldn't it? Sounds like a great summer, that, Rob. Mm. I, um, I, I would be very surprised if he didn't go to the Euros... It's surprising, really, to me that we put so much stock and managers put so much stock in these international friendlies, such as the ones that England played against Brazil and Belgium. But there's so few international games that I guess managers like Gareth Southgate do have to place a, a lot of stock in those games. Oli Watkins just didn't have a great game against Brazil. Tony did play pretty well against Belgium and obviously got his first international goal. If you look at their stats in the Premier League per 90, Oli Watkins is just having a better season than Ivan Tony. That's obvious. But if you look at their... Again, a limited sample size, but the games that they played for England, Tony has actually massively outperformed Ollie Watkins in all sorts of metrics, goals per 90, aerial duels won, all those sorts of things. So I would be surprised if Tony doesn't go. He might take them both, potentially. Watkins could maybe play slightly um, further out wide, potentially. But then you also look at the, the penalty factor as well. Tony's so reliable from the penalty spot. 
England have had issues from the penalty spot in major tournaments before, of course. Whether Southgate will factor that in, I don't know, but I would be surprised if he doesn't go, Tony. But Harry Kane is quite clearly the number one striker. I think he goes over Watkins if it's a 23-player squad. Now, there have been appeals by some international teams to make it a 26-player squad that we've had in the last two tournaments, in which case I think Tony definitely goes if it's 26. But, I mean, you could just see against Belgium how much the England players really enjoyed playing with a Harry Kane-style striker, which is Ivan Tony. You could see him coming deep. The wingers, Jared Bowen and Phil Foden, they were playing at the time. They got on the ball a lot more. And of course, yeah, the penalty. Like, if you think about that backup role for England, Harry Kane's going to play every single minute for England at the Euros. So the backup role, you have to sort of, you know, it's those sort of, you know, marginal game moments like penalties, like balls into the box, which is where Tony uh, is better than Watkins at. And Watkins had so many chances for England. You've just got that feeling that Gareth Southgate doesn't quite rate him in that Brazil game for starts. He didn't have a brilliant game and then Tony came in and did much better. So, yeah, I think if it's a 23-player squad, Tony will go over Watkins, I think.